Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. pray earthly things but to love things heavenly and even now while we are shall endure through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives spirit one God forever and ever amen People make fun of and deride the faithful. The actions of God's people may not make sense to those who are invested in the world, but God's truth succeeds. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. The ungodly by their words and deeds summon death. Considering him a friend, they pined him away and made, him a, made a covenant with him. But because they are fit to belong to his company, for they reason unsoundly, saying to themselves, Short and sorrowful is our life, and there is no remedy when a life comes to its end, and no one has been known to return from Hades. Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and calls himself a child of the Lord. He became to us a reproof for our th of our thoughts. The very sight of him is a burden to us because his manner of life is unlike that of others and his ways are strange. We are, considering by, we are considered by him as something base and he avoids our ways as unclean. He calls the last end of the righteous happy and boasts that God is his father. Let us see if his words are true and let us test what he will help him and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture so that we might find out how gentle he is and make trial for, of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death for, according to what he says, he will be protected. Thus they reasoned, but they were led astray, for their wickedness blinded them, and they did not know the secret purposes of God, nor hope for the wages of holiness, nor discern the prize for blameless souls. The word of the Lord.
Receiving God's grace is not a complicated formula or a mysterious trade. Submitting to his work and his will, following the example of Jesus Christ, these things bring God close. A reading from the letter of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done by gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, come down from above. But it is earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it. So you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive. But because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Lord Jesus, Christ. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. 
but they did not understand what he is, was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and he, when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it into his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of our Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, today is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, and the collect of the day for proper 20, which we offered towards the beginning of this service, it says, Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly and even now while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Seems like quite an ambitious prayer. The pandemic and everything which has flowed from it has put all of us on edge. And here comes the Episcopal Church with a prayer summarizing the particular teachings of Jesus that maybe right now we doubt we can emulate at least fully. How can we not be anxious when there are staffing shortages in just about every place of business we frequent, let alone our own places of business, or when the Earth's climate is in crisis, when we continually have a need for social justice in our nation and across the world, when there is continuous political strife when we have to adjust to the rapid pace of change in our society, and when we have internal struggles that we don't always want other people to know about. How in the world do we say no to the anxiety which seeks to overtake our lives? Well, the solution, and somehow I feel like the word solution is inadequate, but I'll use it. The solution is provided in the first three words of the collect. Grant us, Lord. Grant us, Lord. We are invited to give our anxieties over to the God we know in Jesus Christ, the one who reminds us, if we let him, that our life situation is not our life. We're invited to give our anxieties to the one who was faithful to humanity in the past. The one whom we trust has secured our eternity. All of which has implications for right now. When we trust that Jesus Christ is present with us in this earthly mess, we give ourselves a chance to be less anxious about all that swirls around us. Will our problems go away? Absolutely not. Then why are you telling us this, Father Kurt? Well, it is to say that Jesus is with us 
to endure with us, to steady us when we are shaky, to fall down onto the floor when we have collapsed, to pick us up, and this is why we do what we do at St. John's. Our worship, our study of Scripture, it is all part of our efforts to learn from faithful people who came before us so that we can see the larger picture that God is painting. And when we see the larger picture, we are empowered to struggle together, to support one another, to cry on one another's shoulders, to endure, to forgive, to accept our own forgiveness, and to rejoice with one another, to be Christ to one another. As your rector, as one of the two clergy of this branch of the body of Christ, speaking for myself, but I know Pam would say the exact same thing. We are grateful to be among you. I'm thankful for how we stay together as a parish family, in person and online, however you're here. I'm thankful to God that you are here, because we're here for one another. When we gather, we give ourselves a chance to reduce one another's anxiety in what could very well be the most challenging times that any of us will ever see. We are the beloved community of Jesus down Saginaw and beyond. And for that, I give God thanks. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly, and even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please now stand as you are able. On page 11 of the bulletins, let us affirm our faith by using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have strengthened you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. may be seated. I'll draw your attention to the announcements on page 25. You can read through those. The, I guess the, one of the big things uh, coming up, uh, the bishop, Bishop Adams will be here a week from Wednesday, so he'll be here for the 29th for confirmation, reception, and reaffirmation. reaffirmation. Um, if you'd like to be a part of that uh, service uh, formally, um, let me know uh, ASAP. Otherwise, you can just come and be part of it formally. As looking on the horizon, uh, in the near-term horizon as well, the vestry meets tonight, and as part of that, uh, we, the vestry will approve uh, a lease agreement. Uh, the Diocese of Eastern Michigan will be moving 
their offices over here. Uh, that's, a, that's a good thing for us um, financially and, and otherwise, relationship-wise. Uh, I can say more about that um, after the service or if you want to call me or email. Uh, all that is very good. Uh, within the past few months, uh, you, you may remember, or if you weren't here, you won't remember, so don't feel badly about that, but uh, we renamed uh, the community room to Gissendanner Hall and then the education building to Cox Hall. We know Al and, and Jim for uh, naming those two buildings uh, for uh, the people who've taken care of these buildings for decades. Now, as part of that, we're going to put up some new signage and uh, if you can imagine this in your head, and I can forward a, uh, an artist rendering if you like, but if you imagine the fireplace in Guest Danner Hall, and then we have the Diocesan and Shield, above that uh, we will place some very nice letters and just have them placed into the brick. And if you would like to adopt uh, one of those letters, because with Gissendanner there are many, um, and, and same thing with, with Cox Hall. Um, stay tuned. Uh, we're not going to go cheap on Al and, and Jim, and I'm smiling behind my mask. I know you wouldn't do that, but, but they've done so much good for St. John's over the decades that you know, this is the least uh, we can do. And so uh, stay tuned on that. We'll approve the designs tonight. The vestry probably will. And then um, you can adopt a letter and probably looking at in the range of uh, adds up and that's okay. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, lots of good and exciting things uh, going on here uh, as we just continue to navigate, excuse me, navigate our, our way through this very challenging time and um, in a very faithful way. And so uh, Pam and I and Kevin and Amy, uh, we talk about it all the time. Um, it's, it's been a tough 20 months, but you guys are doing great. And we are very privileged to be with you. And we'll get through it because that's what St. John's, we endure. We continue now. Let me find the offertory sentence. And here it is. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.